Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, before we dive into Mark chapter 6, uh, let me just tell you about something that you've already started experiencing. Uh, we're starting to utilize some of our retired and volunteer pastors to help us do word for the day. And uh, they're gonna, you're going to be seeing them over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, in fact, you saw Ted yesterday. And you're going to see a lot of others. Some you may know, some you may not know. But God has blessed Calvary with a number of, of men who have served God faithfully through the years in different places all over the country, different kinds of ministries. And, and what the great part is they're all involved in ministry here at Calvary in some way, shape, or form. And we just thought we have this wealth of knowledge, this wealth of experience. How about we uh, invite them to help share the word for the day as well. So I hope that blesses you. hope you like it. And if you're wondering why you pull it up and you don't see uh, me or Pastor Joe or Pastor Robert, it's because we're utilizing some of the uh, talents and abilities that God has placed in Calvary. So we're looking at uh, Mark chapter 6, the very end of the chapter, beginning at verse 53. And, and here's what Mark writes. When they, Jesus and the disciples, had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized Jesus and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard Jesus was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were made well. It's a short passage about Jesus healing multitudes. And, and I just want to share with you today that I believe Jesus heals. Today, in, in, in the here and now. Uh, I'm not sure what your experience is with that, but I really believe Jesus heals people. Now, he heals people in one of three ways. Uh, sometimes he heals them miraculously. We see it happen here. We pray for people, and they come back, and they say, hey, my cancer disappeared. Hey, the way they thought uh, I had a tumor, it's gone, uh, and we, they just praise God. So God heals miraculously. He does. That's why we pray for healing. And, and sometimes God heals through medicine. I mean, the fact that we have the, the miracle of modern medicine that we have in this country is a blessing from God. And a lot of times God uses those skills and abilities of doctors to bring healing to our bodies. And it's a wonderful thing. And then sometimes God heals um, what you might just call by heaven. You know, uh, these bodies that we have right now are temporary. And they're, you know, wrecked by sin and they're going to die. Okay, they're, they're, they're going to get older, they're going to get sick, they're going to get weak, they're going to die. That's the reality. But God promises us new bodies where there's no more suffering or sorrow or death or pain. That's our hope in Jesus. And so sometimes God heals by taking us home and giving us a permanently new, better body that uh, is never going to get sick, never going to die uh, in the future. Now, uh, talking about miracles a lot of times makes people uncomfortable. That especially if they're not people of faith, because our society is kind of blind to the miracles of God, uh, partly because with medicine and, and the technology we have, a lot of people don't think about needing God. In fact, God is their last resort. They usually lean into the medicine and things first. And so we just don't see the, the miracles that are all around us because they're happening. Uh, now, when you're in a third world country and they don't have medicine and they don't have the doctors and they don't have access, Trust me, people are praying and they are seeing miracles. And when they see the miracles, they proclaim them, they celebrate them, they're excited about them. I, I know if God's miraculously healed you or someone you love and you tell somebody else, sometimes they're skeptical. Sometimes they're kind of, you know, really, did God do that? But uh, uh, I just want to encourage you to pray for healing. If you know someone who's sick, if you're sick, then, then pray for healing. Invite other people to pray for that healing because God is still in the miracle business. And God's either going to answer yes and perform the healing or God's going to answer no uh, because he does that sometimes. I mean, the Apostle Paul talked about, he, he asked three times for God to heal him from his thorn in the flesh and, and three times God said no. Uh, so sometimes God uh, allows you to suffer and he has a purpose in that. And sometimes God answers by completely healing us. That's the death option. That's the heaven option. That's the upgrade option. Uh, and we need to recognize that prayer for healing can be any of those answers. So uh, here's the question I want to leave you with. When you ask for healing, for yourself, for someone you love, for uh, a random stranger that you meet and ask, when you ask for healing, are you okay with whatever answer God gives? Uh, because that's really the test of faith. That's really the place that, that Jesus wants us to land. 
if we're followers of Jesus, are we okay with whatever answer he gives when we ask for healing? Uh, because that's really the prayer that Jesus modeled. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. See, all of us, when we come to God, when we make a request for healing or for anything else, we need to have that same attitude of Jesus. Father, not my will, but your will be done. And then we need to be committed to praising God for his answered prayer, even when we don't like the answer. So I hope that helps, and I pray today that God would bring healing to your life and to your soul. God bless.